All right, but mainly we just showed you what was taking place. What's going on with Second Ezra chapter six and verse nine? We we've taken you through it, broken down basically broke, broke down most of the chapter, most of the, the uh, important things that you need to focus on. We didn't just read one run verse and then apply an interpretation to it. So this isn't talking about an Edomite kingdom or the rulership of the Edomites coming down. That's right. It's talking about two time periods and symbolism was used to apply these time periods to Esau who came out of the womb first and Jacob who came after. Alright? Not talking about people here or or two nations or two dominions like I said if uh, anyone out there has questions or believe otherwise I invite you to attempt to prove that what we said is incorrect concerning 2nd Ezra chapter 6 and verse 9 concerning the technical breakdowns that we brought forth. You can no longer flee to this. Right. They're you broken down. You, yeah, you, you can't run to this book anymore. Alright? And if you, you well, like we're almost done with this Esau thing. You know, we from, from the beginning, from the color of Esau all the way through, through the, the Duke thing, Obadiah. We've proven that that teaching is false. And I also noticed that that teaching raises up spirits in people. When we, when we prove that those teachings are wrong, it raises up the spirits in certain people. And their horns begin to show. Hmm. There's an emotional, emotional attachment to that false doctrine. And all sorts of other things get thrown in. Why do you want to save the white man? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? You know, we, we can't save anybody. We can only save ourselves. If you catch your 14, 14. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 14, uh, verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, save Yahweh Mighty One. Right. Those men can only deliver their own souls by their own righteousness. Just like... Same for me. I can't save this brother. I can't save you. I can't save anyone. I can only save myself by my own righteousness. So how can we try to save someone? Alright? How can we get somebody into the kingdom? That doesn't make sense. All that is is an excuse for why people run away from things when they've been exposed, when they've been confounded, instead of humbling up to the truth. And repenting. Yeah. How about obeying the commandment and living by every word and not bearing false witness and not spreading a false report? That's what we're doing. We're sticking up for the truth of this word. Regardless of what we, you can't put personal uh, uh, prejudice and things in, in, into it. You got to go by every word. There might be certain commandments in here that people don't want to keep, but you have to humble up and keep those commandments. You got to show your humility and respect this word. Don't don't lie out of this Bible. That's right. You know why? Why aren't you guys asking that? And another thing, many of you you you, you say uh, they ain't going to be in the kingdom. You're trying to get other people in the kingdom. As as if, now, when have we said that? It's not up to me who, who, who goes into the kingdom. The only thing we can do is, is speak the truth of the matter. When the scriptures say some of you might be cast out. Alright, so uh, you got anything? No. We're going to close on that note. And uh, may Yahweh bless your understanding.
Well, that will say shalom. Shalom.